And fuck it, let's do this shit. What's up, everybody? I'm Eric Harrison. Welcome to F and Ingenious. Like I always say, I always welcome you motherfuckers to my channel. Because you're awesome. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm already insulting you and shit. So, yeah, I thought I'd do something a little, I don't know, a little different. Um, I thought it would be interesting if, while I'm preparing to do my review of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, if I did an actual uh, commentary for the movie so that you could kind of get a behind the scenes sneak listen <laughs> to what goes on when I'm watching one of these films in order to uh, do the review on it. Now I used to do uh, commentaries in the past when I first started my channel called Drunken Terries. I kind of just stopped doing that for a while because uh, people don't have the attention spans for to be like <laughs> watching some asshole talk about a whole movie. Um, so I kind of dropped it for a while and just focused on my reviews. But I wanted to just give this a try and see what see what happens here. Uh, so in the tradition of the drunken Terry, I actually am uh, enjoying a nice brewski. It's actually a, I'm drinking a King Cobra premium malt liquor. Only the best will do. I know it's fucking ghetto. Whatever. Don't judge me, bitch. Um, so... <laughs> Because I'm using a headset and there's this microphone right by my fucking mouth, I didn't... I'm not going to be, like, drinking straight out of the, the 40 bottle. Because <laughs> I figure all the sound of the alcohol swishing around in the bottle and all the sounds that would just suck. So anyway, I poured a glass full of uh, yummy beer here and I got a straw in it. And hopefully you don't have to listen to me drinking, but you might still hear me slurping through the straw. Anyway, Jesus, I'm just rambling. All right, so, yeah, so that's the deal. We're going to watch this shit together, and uh, this is kind of an experiment. I just want to see how this goes. If, uh, if anybody enjoys this at all, I can probably continue uh, and actually do a commentary for each of the movies so that you'll get to watch my review, and then if you're really uh, interested, you can watch the movie with my commentary and get even deeper you know, um, on what I thought about the movie. So, yeah, this is a little experiment, and we'll see how it goes. So, anyway, we're watching, of course, the legendary, the fucking really awesome-ass Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984 by Wes Craven. Um, and as at this very moment, we're watching Tina have one of her nightmares about Freddy. Freddy's taunting Tina. He likes to play around with his prey, you might notice, before he kills them. He seems to get a lot of pleasure out of... Just fucking with people. <laughs> um, so this movie was something that uh, Wes Craven wrote probably in the early 80s after he had made a few movies back in the 70s. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes and Last House on the Left. Uh, I'm not sure what else he may have done. But anyway, he wrote this movie and he shopped it around Hollywood and nobody wanted to make it. And I... I think that the reason is is because it seemed like an impossible movie to make with all the crazy effects and all the dream sequences and stuff. Uh, I, th I think that that's the reason why nobody wanted to make the movie. Because um, it just, you would read it on paper, you'd read the script, and it's like, damn, this sounds like an expensive-ass movie. Uh, he wound up finding somebody, Robert Shea, who was uh, the guy that was running New Line Cinema at the time actually decided to give the movie a chance and uh he had to raise the money and it was not easy but uh they did it and uh i i praise this movie on every level the writing the directing what they pulled off for having really not enough money all the effects uh, are done so well and they're so impressive even to this day and i really totally praise this movie i think it's awesome All right. Um, so anyway, oh, there's that scene. Yeah. So I'm watching this uh, like I normally would watch uh, one of my the movies I'm going to review right before I review it. I watch it to take notes. So I literally have a notepad and a pen handy. That was a really cool shot, by the way. The way that it went from slow motion and kind of had a filter on it to. Uh, regular motion and the filters taken away, and now a lot of, when they go back, the, those girls won't be there. Everything looks normal. Uh, that was one shot that they just did, and 
people that uh, I guess aren't really into the movie making process wouldn't really notice or care, but that was really impressive for 1984. I'm sorry I got off track already. So anyway, I got my pen and paper, and I'm going to be writing down all the death scenes so that I'll know where in the movie they are, so that when I decide to do the death toll at the end of my review, I'll know where in the movie to find all the deaths. And anything I find interesting that I might want to talk about in the review, I will have written down. All right, so we got uh, Johnny Depp in his first movie ever. He had gone to L.A. to be in a band, uh, from what I understand, and I guess that wasn't working out, so he uh, auditioned for a movie and got the role in A Nightmare on Elm Street. And we have Heather Langenkamp, uh, cutie, cutie Pie back in the day, and Amanda Weiss is uh, playing Tina there. I just took a drink of my beer. Sorry if you had to hear me slurping. <laughs> so, uh, on my drunken tires, I usually make up a rule. Like, everybody drink when this or that happens. But uh, I kind of got to focus on the movie. So we won't be doing uh, no drinking games. But you could feel free to play your own drinking games at home. Make up your own rules. Drink for every death or whatever the fuck. Look at how big Johnny's hair is. Holy cow. Of course, it was the 80s. Go big or go home, right? His hair is bigger than the girls, though. <laughs> I love the stereo, dude. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure any of my regular viewers understand this, that I fucking love the past. I'm really into the 70s and the 80s. I grew up in the 80s, so I remember the 80s, but... uh. So something about that time frame, the 70s and 80s, I love the way things looked, the way things sounded. I had a stereo like that. <laughs> I had a stereo like that with a cassette player and everything. Those were the days. And you will have to forgive me if I don't just blabber throughout the whole thing. I do have to watch it a little bit. <laughs> uh, I do suspect, though, that I'll wind up watching it again. Uh, actually, when I do my reviews, I watch the movie two times at least. I usually watch it normal once, take notes, and then I watch it with the commentary on in case the, the filmmakers give me any extra bit of information that I might want to use. And then I also watch the behind-the-scenes making of. So, you know, I make like a ten-minute review of me just being a kind of an asshole, but I really do try and uh, glean as much information as I can out of all these, uh, you know, the movies and the documentaries so that I can make the best review that I can make. You might actually hear some sounds in the background. That's because there's other shit going on in the other parts of my house. And it's never quiet here. It's never fucking quiet. So if you hear some bullshit, that's uh, my roommates and shit. You know, sorry about that. How do you know his lights are ugly if you didn't even fucking see him yet? Look at fucking Johnny Depp, dude. No! Oh, fuck, I just shit my pants. At least he helped him up. And by makeup, he means he wants to put it in your vagina. And you're going to let him. Because <laughs> that's what happens in the horror movies. Look at fucking... <laughs> look at Heather Langenkamp. Look look at Nancy uh, be more of a man than Johnny Depp. <laughs> that's so funny. 
<laughs> she was not afraid of him at all. She wasn't afraid of that knife. She'd take a blade for her man. I told you he was going to put it in her vagina. <laughs> I literally just said Virginia. What the fuck? Uh, poor Glenn can't even get a little fucking makeout session. <laughs> and then he's all pissed off because he's not going to get his dick wet. So, obviously now, we've had 30 years of Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger, but there was a time when this movie just came out and it was new, and the whole idea of Freddy Krueger killing you in your dreams was a whole new thing that just kind of exploded onto pop culture. It was the perfect 80s boogeyman, truly. I, you know, my favorite movie is Halloween. I love me some Michael Myers. Jason and Friday the 13th is badass. But you got to give it to Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger for bringing in a new dimension to horror. Truly. Because it made, it was a, it was a mixture of fantasy and horror. But not the kind of, not, not a, not fantasy that was so much far-fetched. It's dreams. It's a dream world. It's something we can relate to. We all dream. So, yeah, back in 84, when audiences got their first taste of Freddy Krueger, it was like love at first sight, you know? Everybody, everybody knew, like, this is a big deal. This is scary. This is intriguing. And everybody wanted to see more. Everybody was clamoring for more. So we got, you know, more sequels. And I, I'd have to say Freddy Krueger in this movie is especially badass. He hasn't qu quite become the comedian that he becomes in, say, part five and six. Like, Freddy fucks around with his prey. He fucks around with his victims. He he does joke around. He's a jokester. He's like Loki. But he's not quite the comedian that he becomes later in the series. Uh, he's Even though he... F he does crack wise once in a while. He's definitely a much more sinister, serious entity in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And he's very frightening in this movie. Because he's he's unhinged, you know? You don't know what he'll do at any moment. And right here, there that's a tooth stuck in the glass. And uh, its I guess that's like a homage to another movie. I don't know what movie, though. You'll have to look that up. Somebody was throwing teeth at the window. Tina! So he is kind of stalking Tina and Nancy at the same time. I think he really wants Nancy, but she's too strong for him, and Tina is the easier prey. That, by the way, fucking excellent special effect, and it probably only cost him $12. Even, doesn't even compare to the CGI bullshit of today. I won't, I won't, I'll spare you that rant, though, for now, for now. You will be hearing that later in one of my reviews, I'm sure, but I'll spare you for now. But you do have to really, uh, you gotta give credit to the effects team for what they did practically in this movie. It's amazing.
very fucking amazing. They built full on rotating rooms and shit. Just insanity. You'd never get that now. Nobody would ever put that much effort into a movie now. Not when you can CGI it. Okay, I said I'd spare you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just drink my beer and shut up. Tina. It's your mom. <laughs> That's what Freddy should have said. He should have busted out the first Yo Mama joke. <laughs> that would have made him classic right there. If he just said, Yo Mama. Oh, snap. It's our first view of Freddy Krueger ever. Oh, God, and he's got long arms and shit. And he's laughing. Look at the way Robert England's running. <laughs> oh, it wasn't Robert England. It was somebody else. I love this part. Look at that. Look at his eyes. He's so crazy. Watch this, he just cuts his fucking fingers off. Because who cares, you know? He's a badass, he doesn't have to give a shit. So anyway, um... Although, uh, Robert England had done plenty of stuff up to this point, this was his pr probably breakout role into major mainstream success. And could anybody else have played Freddy? Of course not. Can anybody else play Freddy now? Of course not. I almost kind of wish we could just lay it to rest because nobody else can do Freddy. Nobody else can do Freddy. It's not like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees or Leatherface that have been played by numerous actors. Freddy was played by Robert England through all the movies, the TV show, promos, commercials... Up until this fucking remake that I won't mention. Won't, won't get into at this point. And you see that shit? They actually went through so much trouble to build a rotating set. For like... What? 40, 50 seconds worth of film? But I love that. You know how much, how many weeks or months of preparation probably went into those 40 seconds? I love that. That's why the older movies are better. So much more was put into them. All right, sorry, won't rant, won't rant. Oh, here we got John Saxon playing Nancy's father, a detective. He often plays detectives. He was also in Black Christmas and uh, Enter the Dragon. To name a few. <laughs> Donald and Marge. Ooh, just cracked my neck. You probably heard that shit. I needed it. It's called a sleepover, fool. I don't know what's up with her hair. Both of those girls. <laughs> Look at those hair. Look at that. I don't even understand what style that was. The 
So, um, Heather and John both appeared again in Nightmare 3. It's really cool of them to reprise their roles. And then, of course, Heather appeared again for a third time in New Nightmare. Unfortunately, as you'll see, uh, Nancy's mom gets pulled through a door. <laughs> and I guess, I guess she's never heard from again. Hmm. Look at that TV. Fucking love it. I want one just like that. <laughs> the little TV in the kitchen. Yes, that was an '80s thing. That was. Really something that happened in the 80s. I like how they're trying to keep her from going to school. I wish my parents would do that. <laughs> would have done that. I'm not... Would do that. Would have done that. They'd have been like, Your fucking ass ain't in school yet? Your friends just got killed. Go to school, bitch! Alright, fucking settle down, Mom, damn. Have some more vodka. So the music is awesome as well. Everything's awesome. The acting, the fucking writing, the directing, the music, everything's pretty much awesome. It was the Men in Black, did you see that shit? It was the fucking Men in Black. They're after her. Oh! He's gone. then maybe you could have just said, Psst, you know, from the book, Psst, hey, over here, instead of grabbing her and pulling her into the bushes like you're going to hurt her and then telling her, I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> I love the way he said that. That reminds me of my dad. My dad would have said it exactly like that. Jesus! And just gotten all frustrated and shit. <laughs> hey, is that solar panels on that fucking house? Holy cow, those guys were progressive. <laughs> See, nobody wants her to go to school. <laughs> How dare you get an education? Oh, snap. That is somebody's sister, and I can't remember who. Is it Bob Shea? One of the producer's sister? I can't really remember. Look at that fucking 70s fro, dude. You know it's the 80s now, right? You don't have to have that fro. <laughs> He's like, I, I choose to. The grave diggers. 1-800-SUICIDE. Suicide. He's a suicide rabbi. Okay, I was about to start rapping. My bad. <laughs> suicide is a suicide. Look up the grave diggers. So they're supposed to be in, what, Ohio. That guy is the most surfer California dude I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't fall asleep, Nancy. Too late. Oh, shit. I had to be fucking freaking out right there. I think I'd pee a little bit. I'd probably pee a little. <laughs> like, oh no, I'm having acid flashbacks. Look at those people in the background just sitting totally still. Not fucking moving a muscle. Creepy. Creepiness. <laughs> it 
Tina's dead. Sorry to say. Nancy, no running in the hallway, okay? Come on. So that's Freddy. <laughs> he just decided to look like some random hall monitor girl. Because that's the way Freddy thinks, you know. He thinks outside the box like that. <laughs> Okay, here we are. We're going to get our first... Well, wait, what am I talking about? It's not the first. It's not the first, but it is uh, a view of Freddy's boiler room. Whatever that is, I'm not even entirely sure what a boiler room is. I would assume it has... It's, it's some kind of industrial complex where they probably melt metals I really don't know I could google it right now but I will not <laughs> so how about that shit what do you think of that now I really feel like in the first movie especially Freddy is very much a Lucifer character. I feel like he kind of represents Satan. That's gross. He keeps cutting himself. He doesn't give a fuck. Freddy's a slasher. He's a cutter. He's emo. Uh, yeah, so I kind of feel like he was... the. He's a representation of Satan, and right now, being in his boiler room is like being in, in hell. And that's what's with the reds and the steam and the smoke and the fire. She's in hell, and Freddy is Satan, and he's torturing her for being a sinner, I guess? Or he wants to kill her, but he can't, because Nancy is too strong and too smart for him. But he will get her friends, because they aren't quite as resourceful. <laughs> Now, one thing I will say, uh, you'll you'll rarely hear a complaint from me about this movie because I think it's pretty badass on every level. But uh, they hadn't quite started to alter Robert England's voice yet in the first one. Maybe in one or two scenes they drop it a few octaves, but uh, that was something that came more in the sequels. And I actually really like the sound of Freddy with the deep, just scary, fucking monstrous voice. So if there's anything that I could say I kind of wish that they maybe uh, improved upon in this movie, it would be Freddy's voice could have been a little more demonic like it became in the sequels. Come on, Nancy, you're stronger than this. You can do it. She, she's already thinking. She's she's thinking about the situation. Working shit out. You gotta love a smart uh, lead character like that. They're watching like in a fucking action movie in the other room and I, you could probably hear the shit. Sons of bitches! Can't find any quiet in this house.
So far, I've been too busy yapping to take any notes. Fuck, I didn't even write down the first kill. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll move on to the second one. We haven't got to the second kill yet. I suspect there won't be that many in this movie. There aren't that many. Usually in the first movies of a series, except for Friday. There was a decent amount in the first Friday the 13th. I remember one time I was watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, with some friends, and we made up a drinking game. Take a shot of tequila for every kill. Well, we wound up taking four shots. You think that there's more killing in, in these movies... There's really not. A lot of it's left up to your imagination and shit. There's more suspense in the originals of any series, which is what I, why I usually like the originals more. I like story, suspense, and character development. The killing and the effects, that's just a bonus. Sorry, Rod, you're fucking screwed, dude. You're screwed. Oh, did you see that sweet Trans Am drive-by? <laughs> fucking love the 80s, dude. Time for some beer. Um, so this reminds me, I'm actually in the process of trying to create the intro for all of the reviews, and I was doing good at first. It was all, it was all coming together real well, and then I just got stuck, like writer's block, sort of, but for editing, <laughs> and suddenly it's like, I don't know what the fuck, how to finish it off, and I was hoping watching the movie would give me some kind of inspiration about how to finish the intro. I may, maybe, I've not decided quite yet, I might use the, the, the nursery rhyme with the girls jumping rope and shit, singing the song, maybe. I guess by now you would have known how it turned out, <laughs> but right now I'm still in the process of even just trying to create the intro for my reviews. Look at this sweet view between her legs. That's hot. There's some random woman's boobs. Because that's not how they're laying camp. Under the water there. <gasps> that would suck ass drowning in a tub of water. Now she's going to play it off. I'm okay. It's all good, Mom. You're just tripping, Mom. You're an alcoholic. You don't know reality from fantasy. <laughs> Go have some more vodka. <laughs> Turn down your bed. I don't even know what that means. Is the bed too loud? You got to turn that shit down? Is it disturbing the neighbors? What the fuck? <laughs> Stay awake. I like the way she rotated that so we could read everything. <laughs> Nancy, stay, wake up. Come on. Your very life depends on it. Looks like she is watching the evil dead. The evil fucking dead. I guess that was a, a thing going on between Raimi and Wes Craven back in the day. They would reference each other's movies all the time. Which is always cool. Always a cool little tidbit. I like how she's all afraid of, like, you know, uh, crazy killer guy. So she's like, let me watch The Evil Dead. That'll 
calm my nerves. <laughs> Notice the, the door is blue in the original movie. The door did not become red until the sequels, which actually makes sense. I remember Wes Craven in the commentary for this movie. He's like, yeah, it was blue in the original. I don't know why they painted it red for the sequels. And I'm like, well, I mean, it matches Freddy's sweater, you know. Kind of makes some sense, symbolism. So yeah, that that house exists in Hollywood, uh, not too far from some of the houses uh, in the original Halloween. Pretty close to like uh, the Doyle house. Uh, it's even I I I remember it's I think it's right down the street from some scenes where Christine was filmed. Of course, there's a lot of shit filmed in Hollywood. So it's near a lot of BS. Do you believe in the boogeyman? Now they're talking Halloween. This is one of the things I find frustrating about these kinds of movies is that the main character knows something that none of the other characters know and nobody will believe them. It always pisses me the fuck up because I put myself in like her position where it's like I'm trying to help. I'm trying to tell people what's up and nobody will listen. It's like, fucking listen to what I have to say. I will slap the shit out of you. <laughs> She's trying to save their lives and nobody will listen, so... It's pretty frustrating. Great lighting right there. Oh, I saw a little... Oh, I can see the lights in the window, though. That's okay. I forgive him. I forgive him for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I look at when I watch a movie. I look at stuff like that. The lighting, the composition, the cinematography. I am drinking beer right now. I'm about to pour me another glass. Sorry you had to listen to me drinking my King Cobra. <laughs> Keeping it ghetto over here. Oh, I saw the street light change. Did you see that? Way in the background, there's a street light change from red to green. That was a go. That was Freddy's signal. It was a go for Freddy. He's like, it's a go! They gave me the signal. It's a go. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to watch it again, because I have not taken a single fucking note. And we are 38 minutes in, and we still haven't even gotten to our second kill yet. That's crazy. It's crazy, I tell you. Nice pajamas, man. <laughs> of course she rocks it. She makes that shit look sexy as fuck. Don't even tell me you're not attracted to Nancy. You know you are. You, you know you'd hit that. <laughs> I would have hit it. I probably still would, actually. Don't tell Heather Langenkamp that I just said that. <laughs> but just between me and you, I'd hit that. <laughs> and this is why it's called a drunken Terry, folks. But yeah, I have a buzz, as you can tell. Oh, well, at least we're coming up on our second kill, which is a really good one, too. <laughs> Look at Freddy. He just takes so much fucking pleasure in what he's about to do. He loves to kill these people, but not just kill them. Make them suffer, taunt them. He especially loves that she's watching. You can tell in the look in his eyes.
Freddy's fucked up, yo. He's fucked up. But he's awesome. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit, I just shit a little bit. I pooed. <laughs> I, you know what? You can run better than that, Nancy. Come on. You got a psycho dream monster after you. I would have been hauling some butt, dude. I would have been breaking world records. <laughs> He's pulling a leather face right now. Ah, oh, Freddy's so fucked up. Again. This is another instance where he's kind of fucking with two people at the same time. Nancy and one of her friends. He seems to enjoy that. The fact that Freddy, Freddy's character, his look, his his image, his personality, everything turned out the way it did and became so iconic is kind of amazing, you know. You know, because in the original script, Wes Craven had him, you know, he was wearing the sweater and the hat and he was burned and he had claws, but he didn't like put a lot of detail on the script except he, he was like, you know, Freddy is this big, huge guy and then Robert England obviously is not a big, huge guy, so it's kind of amazing that he was cast but I'm glad he was, because he doesn't need to be physically uh, enormous to be intimidating and, you know, he had he had written in the script that the killer would have these weird knives on his hand, but it wasn't like he wrote down all this detail. It was something that the effects people created. It's fucking amazing. He gave him a unique personality trait and a unique weapon that's identifiable with him as a killer. And although... I think this is way, obviously, it's way better than any of the sequels. There is one thing in Freddy's Dead that I actually really liked is when they show all the other gloves that Freddy has created. I actually found each and every one of those gloves that they briefly show in Freddy's Dead to be very intriguing. I liked the idea that he didn't just create the the claws. He has he's multiple kinds of gloves to harm and kill his victims with. That's really kind of cool. Very intriguing. Look at the makeup on her eyes to make her look all sleepy. He's sleeping all right. It'll be his last dream. They put, I think they put a little bit too much makeup on her. Damn, she looks fucking like she's on some kind of a drug binge. <laughs> See, practical effects. No CGI. Totally fucking awesome, believable. Because it's actually real. It's actually real and it was really happening in front of the camera. Again... Sorry, I will try and spare you my rant. <laughs> Save that for the review. One of my reviews, I will rant about CGI and practical effects. I apologize ahead of time. Okay, Kill 2, finally, coming in at 45 minutes into the movie. Some people would see that as a bad thing. I love it. Like I said, suspense... Character development, story over kills. That's what I like. 
the killing and the effects, that's just a bonus. Now do you believe me? Fucker's dead. <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to laugh like Freddy. Because he's awesome. Look at those glasses. Holy shit. She made her look like a gray alien. <laughs> she was a gray... Rest in peace, Rod. Pour some of my 40 out for you. Pour it into my mouth. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'm kind of getting drunk. Getting drunk. That's the point, though. It's crazy how they got palm trees in Ohio. It's crazy how they framed those palm trees in the frame, knowing that they're trying to be in the Midwest. <laughs> Wes Craven just, he was probably absent that day. It was somebody else that filmed this scene. Some asshole that didn't know, keep the palm trees out of the shot. <laughs> Hey, watch where you're driving, lady. You know she's drunk on that vodka. <laughs> that vodka I keep hearing about. Katja. Katja? I don't know how to pronounce that shit. That's Charles Fleischer, who is the vo voice of Roger Rabbit. And he, he had a little role... Uh, cameo in Back to the Future 2. Uh, he's got his own show on YouTube, I think it's called Fleischer's Universe. I watched one episode of. He's a fucking weird guy, but it's entertaining to watch. He seems normal right here, but I swear, <laughs> when I've seen him outside of like film roles. The guy's pretty bonkers. And that ain't a bad thing. They're going to study her dreams. How funny. Look at the cat on the trolley. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I never saw that shit before. <laughs> it was a fucking cat on the trolley. <laughs> I think it was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Why? <laughs> Wes Craven's crazy. He's like, you know what? I'm making this great... Look at the cat! <laughs> He's like, I'm making this scary-ass crazy movie. Let's just put a cat on a trolley in the background. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, look at how she's smoking? Now, pr pr probably almost nobody listening to this would remember a time, or even care, because most of us are non-smokers now, myself included, but I do remember a time when the 80s, 70s, you fucking could smoke anywhere. Literally, you could be in a hospital next to a fucking doctors and nurses doing some open-heart surgery, and you could sit there and smoke a cigarette while you watched. You could smoke everywhere up until sometime in the mid-90s that started getting... You know, everybody was like, fuck smokers. <sighs> okay, that's off topic. Let's talk about that cat on the trolley some more. <laughs> Sorry, that's hilarious. Ah, some good King Cobra I'm drinking. He 
He's like, I'm not sure, but let me check with my Jufro. My Jufro might know what's going on. <laughs> ah, that was not anti-Semitic, by the way. I'm pro Jufro. <laughs> Yeah, sticker. Oh, sticker with that needle. Sticker. Freddy got her a little bit. He's getting closer. But then again, so is she. Dun, dun, dun. So now Freddy's running around without a hat. He's just some bald freak now without a hat. <laughs> Did you see did you see the mom's face? She pooed a little. <laughs> she pooed a little bit. <laughs> oh, the days before cell phones. Those were good days. Cell phones and little kitchen TVs. Those were the days. Now, if you've done any kind of research into this film series at all, then this is not news to you. But to those who haven't, uh, Wes Craven does claim that this movie is based on true events. Um, he claims that he had read at least up to three articles of um, I don't know how the right the the p the 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 PC way of saying this Oriental some Oriental people. Uh, you know I'm not trying to be offensive, so don't fucking take offense. Uh, died in their sleep, claiming somebody. And their dreams was after them, and then they wound up dying in their sleep. I don't have a lot of information about this. I've just heard uh, Wes Craven talk about it in interviews. Uh, I, I actually am interested. I should probably do some more research. That's fascinating to me. I wonder what that means. Like, wh why did they die? Why did they think somebody was after them? Is Freddy Krueger real? Is he real? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does he only go after Vietnamese people? Like, I don't understand. But anyway, that's what he claims. That's what Wes Craven claims. If you got any issues with this story, take it up with him. Um, but that's fascinating to me. I need to do some more research into that and find out if there's any fucking validity to people actually claiming to be stalked in their dreams and then dying in their sleep. Because if there is, that makes this movie... A hell of a lot fucking scarier. Oh, you just... That's alcohol abuse. Nancy. That's alcohol abuse, Nancy. Now she's got to go and buy another bottle of vodka. Nancy. Shit ain't cheap. Look at palm trees again, and... I, I know exactly where those bridges are in, in L.A. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, you do what you gotta do, right? Film in L.A. and make it seem like it's somewhere, somewhere else. It is interesting, though, that they didn't even attempt to frame that palm tree out. They did <laughs> <sighs> Um, so back in the day, I don't do this anymore, unfortunately, but I used to actually practice lucid dreaming back in a long time ago, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, if you don't know what that means, lucid dreaming is when you know you're dreaming and then you can control yourself or control what's happening. Um, so some people, I've, I've talked to people and a lot of people just like, yeah, I do that all the time. Well, it's not that easy for me. And not that easy for everybody. Some of us actually have to put effort into it. And I had to put a lot of effort into becoming lucid in my dreams. But I remember one time I had a dream about Freddy Krueger. I had a nightmare, rather. 
about Freddy, and as he was kind of after me, I became lucid, and I realized, oh, this is only a dream, like, you know, like Nancy says in the movie. So I turned to him, and because I was no longer afraid, he couldn't hurt me. He tried slashing at me, and his blades went through me, and I flew away. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Now, here's the weird part. Then, probably years, and I mean years later, I had the opposite dream, where I didn't become lucid, but Freddy was after me, and even though I was not aware that it was a dream, I tried to fly away, and he flew after me and sliced me up, and I remember, like, the fear and the pain of the blades going into me that shit sucked. Look at her! <laughs> She's checked up on vodka! It's <laughs> my kind of woman right there. So yeah, I guess between me and Freddy, it's like one against one. It's one, one to one. I won one, and then he got me back. So, we're even. It's a tie. I love how she just strolled out there with her bottle and lit a cigarette all casual. <laughs> She's like, I'm about to keep it real. Filthy child murderer. All right, I'm going to pour another uh, glass here. You might hear my bartending going on in the background. Deal with it. Sounds like I'm taking a piss. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, we get to see the sledgehammer right there, some foreshadowing in the in the foreground. So <laughs> that's some foreground foreshadowing. Pretty impressive, Wes. Pretty impressive. And we kept this. We kept this evidence. That's fucking kind of weird. She's like, you know how many kids he killed with these? Let's keep them. <laughs> as a souvenir. Look at the vulture over uh, Johnny there. Possibly some more foreshadowing of his death soon to come. And that, kids, is what phones looked like back in the day. <laughs> Landlines. Pretty much don't see those anymore. That's what I grew up on. I... Uh, I don't even own a cell phone. Which everybody can never believe. It blows everybody's fucking mind that somebody could survive without a fucking cell phone on them. But I, we did it for thousands of years, so I think we'll be okay. But I don't own one. Uh, but I, I, I prefer landlines. Like when you don't have to be bothered by people at all times of the day. It's like only if you're home and only if you choose to answer the phone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could be out somewhere and you don't have to worry about your boss calling you to ask you to come in for work and shit. Somebody fucking call and ask for a fucking favor to borrow some money or some bullshit. Yeah, I'm old fashioned. I am I am both old and old fashioned.
Don't fall asleep. Come on, Johnny, dude. You think your girlfriend's crazy? Or you think maybe she's on to something? At least she stood up to Rod earlier in the movie when you were all pussy. Alright, I'm just stretch out on my bed. You might hear me. My bed's kind of squeaky. Yeah, okay. That's better. Oh shit, she's a pill junkie. Miss Nude America. Was that a thing? <laughs> Should I look that up on YouTube now? I'm interested. <laughs> I'm interested in Miss Nude America. Especially in 1984, she probably had a big old bush. <laughs> uh, now I'm just amusing myself. Okay, Mom, go drink some more vodka now. You'll pass out. You fucking alky. <laughs> Look at that TV there. I had one just like that, too. With the wooden panels. You don't know TVs until you've had one of wooden fucking panels. <laughs> Which I don't think were actually... It wasn't really wood. It was just made to look like it. That's <laughs> why. Don't ask me why. It was the 80s. They put wood on the side of fucking volts, or, uh, station wagons and TVs. and Fake wood panels. That was a thing for some reason. Oh, sweet. We get some side boob action. Nah, just a fucking tease of side boob. I have to pause this and go whack it real quick. Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. Don't get too uncomfortable over there. I'll save the whacking for later. <laughs> Look at this perv. Staring at her bedroom window. Yeah, you shouldn't stare, you perv. <laughs> Some kind of lunatic. Yeah, why do they live in that big ass house, just the two of them? What do they do with all those other rooms? It's just two fucking females in one house. Inquiring minds want to know. I love this. We get to see the mom <laughs> grabbing some vodka out of a hiding place. <laughs> She's probably got stashes all over the house. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> You're not a real alky until you've got stashes of vodka all over the house hidden behind fucking towels and shit. <laughs> uh, Glenn, can't count on you for shit.
<laughs> Dude, button your shirt up. Movie wants to see your hairy ass chest and your gold necklace. This ain't the 70s. Get rid of your leisure suits. I know you still got them. Leisure, leisure suits. That's hard to say, especially when you're buzzed. It's a little late, honey. I think he's fallen asleep already. So I think that's something that definitely makes this uh, particular entry in the series special. Is that he really fucks with Nancy while he's fucking with her friends. It's almost like, like I said earlier, it's like he really wants her, but she's too strong. So he's going after her friend. He's trying to break her down by... Fucking with and killing off her friends and then kind of showing it off to her. He's trying to break her down because she's so strong. Like, she's the prize. She's the one that he really wants. He wants to tongue her. But yeah, that was a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Because that's the way Freddy works. He can get all these other people. They're easy. It's not even a, really a challenge. He wants to get Nancy because she's the prize. She's not as easy to get as all these other people. She got her bottle with her. Um, so right now in the movie, what's happening is it's, it's midnight and all the stations of TV are going off the air while Glenn gets fucking killed. And that is something that used to happen. Now TVs just go on and on and on, but once upon a time at midnight, television stopped and it was static until like six in the morning. Uh, here we got the same room that Tina died in, the same rotating set. Uh, they redressed it in order to s have a kind of a Stanley Kubrick, the shining moment with just gallons of blood spewing out. <laughs> Obviously... Mr. Depp wouldn't have that much blood in his body, but it still makes for a fucking cool-ass scene. And it makes you wonder, like, what happened to him, you know? What did Freddy do to him that just spewed out, like, fucking 100 gallons of blood? But you don't know, do you? And you don't technically see what happened to Glenn. You just see the aftermath. She's a prisoner. Look at that. A fucking prisoner in her own house. She's fucking... She's limited. She's a prisoner, but not helpless. Oh, yes. Uh, I have to mark that one down. We'll mark it as a one, one hour and nine minutes. She's still trying to get somebody else to help her out. Ultimately, what she, Nancy, 
has to realize is that she has to do it herself. Nobody else can help her. She has to do it by herself. Which sucks. But that's the truth of the matter. Nobody else is reliable. She's the only strong character in the fucking movie. He's not even listening. What a douche hole. See? Even she realizes he wasn't even listening. You know what's funny is that guy's bald ass head. <laughs> All right, and so here we go with the uh, the Wes Craven special. He likes booby traps, and you will have witnessed this in some of his movies, particularly this one and The Hills of Eyes. Uh, uh, and uh, what's the other one? The People Under the Stairs. Wes Craven has a thing for booby traps, and he puts it in his movies, which I think is pretty awesome, actually, because booby traps are awesome. It's something you could do yourself. I'm not advising that, but if you were battling a crazy dream killer, maybe you would want to set up a few booby traps yourself. I'm just saying. But it's also a demonstration of her intelligence, uh, her uh, ability to take care of herself, to improvise in a situation. It just it's a it's a it it speaks to her character and how strong she is. He had to wipe his shoes on the way out. Did you see that shit? <laughs> he had to wipe his shoes. She's putting her mom to sleep. It's probably not a smart idea, but I guess when you can't convince anybody of anything, you just give up at some point, right? Like, all right, mom, you're not going to listen to me. You've done drank yourself to death. You might as well go to sleep and die. Because she knows that's what happens during sleep. So see, she says, I love you. She probably knows it's the last time. She can't help her mom because her mom refuses to be helped. So she has to let her go and just die. Kind of a weird fucked up subtext going on there. Probably about alcoholism. If you really want to think that deep about it. When you realize you can't help somebody. Because their problem is just bigger than you and them. Getting a little deep on this commentary. I should probably make some more jokes about virginas. <laughs> Don't want to go too deep on the commentary. It's not. It's not. It's not. This is about. You know what I'm saying? Virgina. <laughs> Uh, Eric. Dude, her watch fucking talks? <laughs> That's badass, dude. I don't, I've never had a talking watch. Now, 
I'm sorry. I've said it before, but I gots to say it again. Heather Langenkamp was a cutie pie. But I mean, if Johnny Depp can't even hit it, I got no fucking chance. <laughs> Fucking Johnny fucking Depp can't get in those panties. Ain't nobody getting in there. Oh, fuck. You know you're dreaming now, don't you? Why would it be there? In a dream... So, 30 years, man. 30 years since this movie came out. It feels like longer. Does that make sense? A lot of people would have been like, where'd the time go? Seems like yesterday. But I feel like... It feels like it's been out forever to me. Although I do remember... Although I was a, probably about five... At the time when the movie was released, I do remember the way that... It exploded onto pop culture, and Freddy Krueger suddenly became a thing. But still, even though I have the memory of when it did come out, I feel like it had always existed. Does that make sense? Like, you look at any any time before 1984, can you imagine a world without A Nightmare on Elm Street and without Freddy Krueger? Oh, pardon me, I'm all burping over here. Because that's what I mean. It's like, although I remember the world without it, it's hard for me to imagine the world without Freddy Krueger. There must have been like a, a feeling of something's missing here. Something's missing and I don't know what it is. And then f fucking Freddy came along and everybody was just like, oh, that's what was missing. And now he's here. Man, we're almost done with this movie. We're almost there, guys. Thanks for, uh, to anybody that actually has listened for this long and put up with me <laughs> and my drunken Terry, thank you for fucking hanging out with me and watching A Nightmare on Elm Street, man. If you enjoyed this, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a comment saying this is pretty cool, and we'll do it again. We'll do it again. In fact, I might even consider the idea of doing this live. I've thought about it before. Uh, I might experiment and try and do one of these commentaries live one day, which is, uh, you know, a thing I can do on YouTube. It would be a little, little tricky. I'd have to give everybody forewarning, you know, saying like, hey... In like a week, we're going to do a live viewing of Nightmare so-and-so. Come and join me. But we'll see. Uh, it depends on how well this uh, one is received. If anybody actually gives a fuck. I'll be lucky if I got one person watching right now. Or listening, rather. Here we go. It's the big final showdown. Starting in Freddy's world. So I guess originally for that scene, when she jumped, she was supposed to be falling for a long, 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 long time. Like it seemed like she was falling forever. It was probably cut for budgetary reasons. There's bald-ass Freddy without his hat. 
Dude, she just totally tackled him. She doesn't give a fuck. She's not really afraid of anything. Nancy's a badass. She jump tackled that fucking child killer. You pulled him out, Nancy. Prepare. Oh, I just pooed again. <laughs> I pooed and peed a little. Whoa. Did you see that finger on the wall? Why was there a finger sticking out of the wall? That's weird. She's taunting him now. Isn't that awesome? The roles have switched. Now she is taunting him. <laughs> it's like, fuck your bald head, bitch. You bald bastard. Baldy McBalderson. <laughs> it sucks that she's a prisoner in the house, but that's it's also great in the way that it makes you feel so... Her vulnerability. She's so fucking vulnerable. She's stuck in the house with Freddy Krueger. Cannot get out. Oh, she's taunting him and shit. That's so badass. It just goes to show that Freddy, technically, would have been better off just fucking with anybody else in Springwood. Anybody else in Springwood, because Nancy's the one fucking person that can take his ass out, but he couldn't resist the challenge. Ah, I like that shit. Now they're starting to get a little more of the demon voice in there. Burn him again? Why not? Didn't work the first time. Light him up one more time. This shit's funny right here. She knocks his ass down the stairs while he's on fire. <laughs> Freddy's a chump when it comes to Nancy. He can take anybody out, but she just fucking plays him for a fool. Really long fire burn for a stuntman right there. Very impressive. Definitely for 84. Shit, impressive for 84. Impressive for now, because they probably use CGI fire. Not gonna go down that road. <laughs> it's, But you know, it's true. At least that shit was real back in fucking 84. Now it's all CGI fire. Somebody actually put their life on the line for a movie. Which sounds kind of ridiculous. But that's commitment. About to see the fire tornado. Watch. Here it comes. There it is. It's fire tornado. It's, you can tell it's the air coming from upstairs, interacting with the fire going on downstairs. Oh. See? There's butterflies again. There's butterflies all in this movie. <laughs> She's drinking vodkas in heaven now. Oh yeah, that was another death. I need to write that one down. 125. Get your bald ass out of here, dude. I just saw my wife get fucking swallowed by the bed. <laughs> He's like, ah, somebody slipped me some, some acid. I like this part where she's like, 
go downstairs, and he fucking obeys. Like, she's the master at this point. Everybody listens. Uh, finally, I mean, it took forever, but now everybody listens to what she has to say. Go downstairs, and he fucking goes, without question. Because she knows. Nobody can help her. She has to face Freddy by herself. And by face him, I mean, don't look at his ass. <laughs> this is so badass. And this is a scene that was repeated in Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which is, it really looks cool in both movies. But so fucking sweet right here. Look at this. She won't even look at him. Or she'll turn for a second. Just to tell him to... Basically just to fuck off. Watch. And she turns back away. Oh, dude. You gonna take that... Freddy, you gonna take that shit? Oh, no. He disappeared into a bad effect. The only bad effect in the movie, by the way. <laughs> All the other ones were pretty badass. That's the only actual bad without the ass effect in the movie. <laughs> it's going to burn off soon. I don't know if that's optimistic or not. <laughs> it's like, it's a nice day. Yeah, the fucking sun's going to explode. <laughs> Whatever. Now, Wes Craven meant for Nancy to fucking win, win, win. Like, defeated Freddy, he's gone, this is one movie, she, he's done, she wins. Uh, Robert Shea, on the other hand, being someone that's trying to, you know, build and cultivate a production company, was like, we probably should make sequels and make more money. So they couldn't agree on how to end this movie. I prefer Wes Craven's way. Let's just end with Nancy winning, because what was the point of all of this if she just didn't win? If Freddy just still has power and control? Seems pointless, right? It's true, but... I, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> So that was done in one take. They did the one take, and then they are like, we're done, fuck it. Whether it looks stupid or not, we're keeping that ending. But anyway, I'm with, I'm with Wes Craven on this one. Uh, as much as I love the series, uh, if they just made the one and ended it at that, it would made more sense that sh Nancy was more powerful. She won. She beat Freddy. In the end, it's like... You kind of just left going, well, what the fuck? Who won then? Was it Freddy? Was it fucking Nancy? What the hell? Her mom got sucked through the door. <laughs> what am I supposed to make of that? But at least the whole movie leading up to the fucking end was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, of course, naturally. Naturally. Uh, I want to bitch about it, but really it's kind of natural uh, evolution of... Let's keep going, let's keep making more movies, because we need to keep making more money in order to keep the production company alive. Uh, I can't fucking argue against that too much. It's understandable. They kept making more, and some of them were good, and some of them were not so good. But, you know, it brought us a pop culture fucking phenomenon. Freddy Krueger and A Nightmare on Elm Street, and a whole new way to look at horror movies. A whole new way to look at slashers. I guess I can't complain too much about that. Um, 
so that's it, guys. Thanks for fucking watching this movie with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I really did have a blast watching this with you. Uh, I'm going to have to watch it again and actually take notes next time so I can do this review. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks and sh for sticking around and uh, maybe catch you on the next one if we all decide we want to do this again. So uh, catch you on the, n the next one, possibly. And... Uh, Peace out, sweet dreams, as they say.